today I am in Nigeria, Abuja, Nigeria, live, coming to you on location from Champions Royal Assembly. It's going to be a great day. You've been asking yourself the question, when is this whole virus thing going to let up? In fact, a lot of people want to do a lot of prophecies about it when there was nothing said about it before it showed up. I believe we have answers for you on the program today because I'm with a mighty prophet of God. Stay tuned. This is your time for a breakthrough. Today on our program, I have a great, great friend of mine, and uh, I, I, I just want you to prepare yourself and get ready, because he's going to say some stuff that uh, is not the norm, and that's exactly what we want. Our guest today is Prophet Joshua E. Gilla. E. Gilla. I don't want to mess his name up. Prophet <laughs> E. Gilla. Thank you so much for allowing us to use your space and your place. I am in the 80,000 seater arena of this man of God and uh, it is just a phenomenal thing. The, the thing that blows my mind is their pool of Bethesda where during baptism you can have thousands of people sitting there in the baptism because it's set up like uh, an Olympic pool stadium. Uh, the, the things that is in his head and so we're going to pull some of those out today on spiritual authority. Call a neighbor, call a friend. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life starting now. And I expect that God is going to do the supernatural and something extraordinary in your life. Look, 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 look. We're going in, we're going in, we're going in, we're going in, we're going in. Look at that. Look at, look at there. <laughs> look at there. 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 What do you think about things like that? This is, this is only in the imagination of, 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 of some, 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 you have to have a dream in order to do this. This is, that's, that, that's real what you are looking at uh, right now uh, in adjacent to the main uh, sanctuary feels like uh, one of those fantastic swimmers are going to jump into the Olympic side <laughs> pool and go to swimming. Look what the Lord has done for you. Thank you Thank so you, much Bishop. in the name of Jesus. Thank Tell me you. who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. We have, you have the victory. He's an author. He's a teacher. He's a prophet. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a great man of God. He's my guest today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bishop. I wanted to um, ask you, um, uh, is there any prophetic insight on when this corona virus slash variants is going to come to an end? And I say it this way, we're now dealing with 16 different variances of this, of this virus. Yeah. And some time ago I had a dream about seven months ago, I had a dream where there was a man sticking his hand into a bag and throwing viruses in the air, mm -hmm. and all of the viruses had Greek names, like Delta, like Kappa, mm -hmm. uh, Greek names, and what, like Corona. Mm -hmm. And um, in the Bible days, all of the plagues was God's way of coming against all of the gods of Egypt, saying that I'm God, and I'm God mm -hmm. alone, and you will no longer sit on the throne and exist beyond me. Mm -hmm. There's a fear in the United States of America. There's uh, 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 90 million people who refuse to take the, 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 the vaccine. I've already been vaccinated and um, I don't believe it's the mark of the beast or the antichrist. Although I, I do think that there may be a, uh, 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 some things that looks like it because in America, they're saying that if you don't take the vaccine, you can't work on the job anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't go to different places. So you buy or sell. But this is about life. And so from the prophetic standpoint of view, what is God saying to us in this season? First of all, God spoke to me about um, coronavirus uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. I was very precise about the date, 2020. And um, we saw the manifestation. Uh, the plague has 
come and it is going to move to a, a disease yes. and um, there's nothing we can do about that but that does not mean that God will not give his own elect victory we already have gotten victory over over this I believe we are in the season where faith of believers are being tested and at the same time wisdom is required mm. wisdom is required for nigeria i want to believe it's the heaviness of the divine presence of god the prayer of the saint uh, we could remember during the uh, 20, uh, 2020, somebody said uh, there will be dead body all over Africa, most especially in Nigeria. But because we are a praying country and the hand of God has, is upon this nation, and I want to believe that the government of the day were very proactive to take quick measure. And that's why we did not have the spike the way it happens in other nations. Yeah, let me, let me say something to, to bring some of the people up on it because yeah. um, not everybody understands what's going on in Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria has become the 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 awe and the the wow and the uh, uh, the, the nation to watch as it relates to coronavirus. When the virus first came, they shut this nation down immediately. That's yes, it. yes. Shut it down. Follow certain principles. I'm here in Nigeria, and in America, we're, 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 we're back again receiving about 30 to 50,000 cases a day. Mm -hmm. Three to four, five hundred uh, people die hospitalized, and about six, seven thousand dying a day. Mm -hmm. At this rate, we're going to be well into the millions in no time. But in Nigeria, I don't think that through the whole course of it, I don't think that there's been 10,000 that, cases. That's why I want to first start by saying that we give credit to God, the prayers of the believers in this country, um, we are able to arrest it spiritually because there's something about the virus, it's spiritual, mm. and then we're able to arrest it spiritually. And then number two, some people don't want to give the government of the day credit. I believe our government did very, very well. So. They, 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 they were proactive, they shut down the borders quickly, and they took uh proactive steps and measures and then thirdly wisdom mm. bishop one of the greatest assignment of the devil is not to get us to sin alone is to get us out of the flesh <laughs> to die because when you commit sin and you are still alive grace is available for you to keep you but when the devil takes you out of this body that's the end so the devil is in the business in this end time to kill more souls than to make souls to be to be to go in sin and this is the problem of most believers we spiritualize what we should physicalize we spiritualize what we should physicalize. And I, I believe you're right. The Bible says the devil come to kill, steal, and to destroy. That's he's it. He's not interested. He's interested in, in killing us. To kill. To destroy. And so we, the church is so conscious of just sin. God is against sin. That's true. But you see, as long as grace is available, the sinner can be saved. Mm. But if the sinner dies in sin, mm. that's the end. That's why I said, I am the God of all flesh. He's also the God of all spirit, but the God of all flesh. So the mystery of the flesh is important. As anointed as you are, Bishop, you are anointed because your spirit is still in this body. So the body is your visa for your existence on earth. The day the body drops down, your spirit is not permitted to operate here on earth. It becomes an illegal spirit. Mm. So we spend much time, I'm not trying to be carnal, we spend much time attending to our spirit that we don't give more care to the flesh.
And we believe that taking care of the flesh, for example, resting when necessary, proper medical checkup, prayer, and etc. We feel that is carnality. And so the believer is so spiritually conscious and earthly useless. And so he wants to do, he wants to carry out an assignment for God. And the flesh is your visibility on earth. And so the enemy knows that. He knocks down the flesh. The man's spirit is gallant, but his flesh is weak. And because the flesh is down, once the devil knocks down your flesh down, there's nothing your spirit and soul got to do with the body. You are out of this war. You, you, you said something, I want to go back to it, about the, uh, um, the, the spirit, as long as it's in the body, is legal, but when it's out of the body, is legal. Yes. Because that sounds like, to me, how demons function. Yes. Illegal spirits out of the demons body. Demons need the body of a man to operate. They move around looking for the body. The body of a man, your flesh, is a, is a, it's one of the greatest assets that demons need. They can stay as long as the body is. Have you ever seen anybody that is dead that demons stay there? Nope. They don't stay in dead bodies. They stay in living bodies. And so the church does not understand. Bishop, if the devil knows you are going to win 100 million souls for Christ, he can make you to be so much insensitive to your flesh. You might be righteous. He torments the flesh. He makes you not to pay attention to your flesh. And then you don't give necessary rest. You die in Christ, but 100 million souls will not be saved through you. My God. So the church does not understand why the enemy is allowing the plagues, I mean, attacking the nations with plague. The more souls that die on earth, the more happier the kingdom of darkness is. And so what is happening? The place of wisdom. I took the vaccine. Mm. Because God convinced me, take the vaccine. Not because I'm not anointed. And I told people, be sure you, you've taken the vaccine. Yes, it, does, it doesn't reduce your faith. No, 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 no. And I'm not also... It takes care of my body. <laughs> yeah, I'm not also campaigning for people to take it. Yes. If you feel you, you need to take it, fine. If you feel you don't need to take it, fine. It, it does not reduce your faith. It, neither does it increase your faith. And it doesn't make you that you don't have faith in God. I have some people challenge me, why did you take the, why did you take the vaccine? You, you shouldn't have taken the vaccine. And, and, and why did you make it public? Then I said, there are preachers who have taken the vaccine and they are hiding. They're hiding. There is no superman anywhere, but there's a super God behind an ordinary ah, man ah. that makes us super. Yes. And so, I, I am in the healing ministry. I believe in supernatural healing. But I believe that one of the greatest assignments of the enemy is to manipulate the church from seeing the need to take care of the body. Jesus had a disciple whose name was Luke. Who yes, was a who was a medical doctor. A Jewish priest told me when I was in Israel on a tour, he says, the scripture that talks about if there's any that is sick among you, let them call for the elders of the mm -hmm. church, let them anoint with all and pray mm -hmm. the prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. He said, in the days that that scripture was written, the oil was used for medicinal purposes. Purpose. Yeah. God has always incorporated medicine with miracles and healing and what have you. Yes, I believe in miracles. Yes, yes. I believe in healing. But um, in America, the trick of this vaccine is bad because... We live in a vaccine society. That's right. When the kids are born, the, the first six months of the kids being born, the they're taking vac vaccines, vaccinated about everything. Meters, we do flu shots yeah, every winter. So yeah. What, but all of a sudden, time plus time equals influence. A person keeps on saying something over and over again. And you start believing it, and so this this administration began to speak against this. There's people that were speaking against it, and they did, and so now you have all these people that are unvaccinated. But I thought that here in Nigeria. Uh, the vaccine wasn't here. I thought people weren't getting it because no. it wasn't here. No, people were getting the vaccine. 
And funny enough, people from the secular world, from the world, from the uh, who are not even born again, are taking the vaccine. And there's a fear that has come in. I, I also believe that the enemy can use the can use science to manipulate the church mm -hmm. what we call scientific witchcraft yes it can happen yeah, but in 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 the case of coronavirus i knew that it is not the mark of the beast bishop if it is the mark of the beast it then means you and i have missed the rapture mm -hmm. and any sense here that is that are available have missed the rapture because the antichrist the spirit of the antichrist is in the world but the antichrist cannot manifest until the taking away of the saints so let's talk about the uh, uh the uh the mark of the beast yeah uh, and and it's original yeah where, where the word mark of the beast, beast came from yeah of course we know it's in revelation chapter number 13 yeah but during the Maccabean revolt, yeah. uh, they came in and they declared Israel and they wanted to worship God. Mm -hmm. So on the other side, there was groups of individuals that says that if your cattle mm -hmm. did not have the mark on his horns on, or on, on his head mm -hmm. saying that we renounce the God of Israel, mm -hmm. you could not plow our fields, yeah. carry our water, mm -hmm. so on and so forth like that. That's where the mark of the beast came from. Yeah. In the, Revel in the book of Revelation, chapter number 13, the Bible says, Here is wisdom. Mm -hmm. Let him that have wisdom count the number of the beast, for it is the number of the mm -hmm. man, and his number is three score and six, mm -hmm. six, six, six. Mm -hmm. But it's not telling us that it's actually the number six, six, six. Of course. Because it's, if that was the case, you said to have wisdom and count. Mm -hmm. You have to count, have mm -hmm. wisdom, tell him a six, mm -hmm. six, six. He said well, he would not be able to buy or sell except he have the mark. Mm -hmm. The Bible also tells us that this is after the man of sin is revealed, mm -hmm. the false prophet and the antichrist. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know who concocted that part of the that part of the, the, the part of the story, but I think the devil is excited about it, predicated yes. on what you just said, yes. because people are dying. Of course. The problem of the church has become a wisdom problem. Mm. And that's the greatest problem. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Wisdom is not the absence of knowledge. It's actually the lack of the application or the activation of knowledge acquired. Some people are informed, but they don't know how to apply. So the application of knowledge is wisdom who told you you couldn't preach <laughs> <laughs> it's true do it again do it yes. again do it again they have to hear this yes. this is important so wisdom uh -huh. is the application of knowledge not it is possible for knowledge to be available and not applied right and a person not know what to do with it. Not know what to do with it. And so when knowledge is not applied, then wisdom is not seen. So there are a lot of people who are well knowledgeable about it, but because it is not applied. There's problem. For example, Bishop, somebody goes and fasts for 200 days. Hey. And, I, and I ask, I believe in fasting, uh -huh. but you are dealing with the flesh. Bishop Jesus fasted for 40 days for an assignment to die for you and I. 40 days and 40 nights just to die for you and I. And I asked the question, if you are fasting for 200 days, who are you about to die for? <laughs> but it looks like a spiritual exercise. But what is the purpose it's of the... Trap. It's a death trap. And that is the problem. You can be so over spiritual to the detriment of your flesh for example a man of god can be busy doing the work of god and the power of god is moving powerfully and the flesh is saying i need some rest and if you don't rest you'll be late to rest mm. and somebody will pick up your assignment to do the place of wisdom is very important bishop there is a bet date and there is a wise date. 
the day you encounter wisdom is the day you start living because wisdom is the principal thing in all thy gettings get wisdom and when you get wisdom you become a principality in the area of our health our flesh i believe that the end assignment of the devil is not to only get us into sin is to get us out of this world immediately whether anointed or godly or unrighteous if you are anointed you are righteous and the devil know you are going to depopulate hell and populate heaven he gets you out of the edge so that you don't win much souls for christ so you're not saying that that, that uh so you're saying that uh, a great man of god who uh, has not taken care of his body and so on so like yes. the enemy works against him and he dies he still goes to heaven but the decreasing of the population of hell yeah is because he's because he did not fulfill his yes. assignment yes the devil looks at you and says the devil doesn't even care about him going to heaven he, he, he wants to stop he, the 100,000 stop the 100, it's about calculation if bishop or if prophet Joshua can win 100 million souls for Christ and uh, if I can make him to go to heaven quickly and the hundred souls miss heaven that's okay for me so it's 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 a wise calculation that the enemy is doing the church does not care about our flesh we feel it's carnality that's why a sister will not dress well she will not take a bath and she wants a good husband <laughs> because she feels so long as she speaks in tongues she prays that's okay that god will give her a good husband so there are certain things we are neglecting and have a, and have a good husband he's the wife that can dress well yes yeah. smell well yeah wow who told you <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back let's yes. back a little bit there, okay because this is important this is important the attack of the enemy right now on the body of christ his number one agenda is to kill you of course snatch the spirit out of the body and leave you dormant that's it death you know nobody preached that nobody and we don't care we think it's all about we want to do exploit for god but you want to do exploit for god your body is your permanent resident your body is your green card for stay on here on earth and if the visa is cancelled you don't have a business staying here so you need to take care of the body okay now let's go back to illegal spirits because isn't a demon a legal spirit I yes I, they are this embodied spirit right. they are illegal spirit looking for a legal body to possess to carry out an assignment because every spirit without a body is an illegal spirit so he the devil needs a body that's why when the spirit is casted out of a body it goes, it goes about wandering about trying to find trying to find a place. a place and if he does not see a body to possess he comes back to the same body and if that body is empty he invites more stronger demons seven i just don't want to leave this beautiful house which is your body your body is a house your body is a temple and then he possesses it and from the body he moves around to carry out assignment he manipulates your mind and suggests to you and you think you are the one thinking but a demon is right inside speaking through your mind and you carry out the works how come we're not hearing messages about demons and demonic activity in the time in the day where most of the messages is about faith about the kingdom because the because the devil has manipulated the church that we are ignorant of the devices of the enemy and god does not want us to be ignorant of the devices of the enemy and some people think when we talk about warfare we talk about we talk about pulling down stronghold that we're being conscious of demons mm -hmm. no we are not being conscious of demons bishop in luke chapter 4 jesus after fasting 
for 40 days and 40 nights, the tempter came. Yes. Not before, but after fasting. Who would have believed that after fasting is highly anointed and demons and the devil should not near him? The more the anointing increase, the more the forces of darkness come around. The devil was not slain by the anointing after 40 days and 40 nights fasting that Jesus did. He came around and tempted him and spoke the word to the word. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Turn this bread to become stone. Yeah. This stone to become bread. And you find out that he was not afraid. And this is one of the things people don't understand. That in spiritual warfare, until you engage and have victory, you don't say you've conquered the enemy. So we like saying that there's no demon anywhere. That is the ignorance of the, a man that's a demon. Such statements sometimes uh, makes the church sometimes not to understand that we are engaged in a warfare. And that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. And Bishop, one of the greatest weapons the enemy is using to fight the church is ignorance. It's ignorance. No demon. No demon. Ignorance. ignorance. Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. And it is possible to lay hands on somebody and they fall down under the anointing and come back with the same demon because knowledge is not put in place. It is the truth that we know, John 8, 32, that will set us free. The greatest deliverance we need in this end time is the deliverance of knowledge and wisdom. Deliverance of knowledge and wisdom. <laughs> No, really, really. And, you know, I, I, I do that because uh, when it hits me, it hits me hard. <laughs> you know, so that's what I do that to. He said, who told you you to preach? But here, 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 here's the thing. That's the spirit that believers are possessed with. Yeah. They're possessed with a spirit of stupidity. That's right. And they've turned the stupidity spirit into a spirit of, of some greatness of some sort. Like they we know spiritualize something. stupidity. Yes. We spiritualize it. We make it think, we make people think it's spirituality. Any spirit that is outside of a body, mm -hmm. that doesn't have a body, is an illegal spirit. It's an illegal spirit. And so the business of the devil is to get your body down so that you cannot carry out your assignment. Because as long as every content of what you become in life is in your spirit, and the information is stored in your spirit. Your spirit needs the flesh to carry out the assignment. I believe that there are those of you that are watching today that while the prophet was speaking, you begin to feel a queasiness in your stomach. Or you became uh, severely or chronically uh, um, um, distracted. Uh, you may have felt something uncomfortable or had uh, a flashback or memories. That's because when the word of the Lord goes forth, it troubles every demonic force that is in you. And today, in the next few moments, we're going to pray the spirit of wisdom and knowledge on you and cast off of you that super self-righteous spirit of stupidity that we have made, we have made... <laughs> we are spiritualized. We spiritualized it. The devil is a liar. Any spirit that is moving without a body is an illegal spirit. spirit. Save the Holy Ghost. That's and right. even the Holy Ghost enters into a body. Yes, it needs the body. Yeah. The Holy Ghost cannot operate legally without your body. Yes. That Maybe is not that your body is the yeah, temple of the, the, temple Holy of the living God. Yes. And that is why when Jesus came down to the earth, he needed the body of Mary. Body. If he landed on planet Earth without the body and the womb of Mary, he becomes an illegal spirit. So your body is very important. That was why when Moses died, the devil contested for the body of Moses. And God did the burial. God took the body. Who told you your flesh is not important? Bishop, 
the dead in Christ will rise up again. Yeah. That which the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar and locusts have eaten, they will vomit it and it will come back again. Jesus took his body to heaven. Why? If the body is not important. Yeah. And the scripture says that in the last days, he will return. He will return. And walk the streets of, of yes. Jesus. Yes. Uh, Moses and some people say it's the, the, the other one, another one. But the Bible says they did miracles in the time of their days, part the seas mm -hmm. and cause fire to come down from heaven. So that would be Elijah and Moses. Some people say it's Enoch and the other one. We, we don't argue that. The, the, the point about it is, is this, is that God did not want them to snatch, to get hold of the body of yes. Moses. Yes. And Satan was looking for it so he could raise Moses back up. That's it, because the body is important. The body is important. And Jesus took his body. The grave was empty. When he appeared, Thomas fixed the hands, put his hand, and felt, look, you can feel me. I'm not a spirit alone. I'm spirit, soul, and body. And that's why Paul said, that man, Jesus, he was 100% man and 100% spirit and 100 percent god yes. and so the reason why we see him on the last day appear in the cloud is because he is not coming as an illegal spirit to the world he's coming with the body even as 100 percent god there you have it what's your problem today what have you been dealing with i believe that breakthrough is coming to you right now I believe that yokes are going to be destroyed in your life. Whatever your need is, deliverance is for you in this hour. I don't believe it's a mistake that I'm in Nigeria in this Champions Royal Assembly. I don't believe it's by mistake that I'm sitting across from the great prophet of God. I don't believe it's a mistake that the Lord has given us a word in time for you to understand what he said that the plague is going to turn into a disease. What do you mean? Well, the plague of, 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 of 100 years ago was the bubonic plague. Uh, they have vaccinations for, 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 for that. Uh, the plague of the 80s was AIDS, HIV. They That's got right. medicine and That's right. things uh, um, for that. Mm -hmm. Ebola was the plague of the 90s. That's right. They have vaccinations for that. For that. It's disease. And I believe that God is going to help you there. I also believe that God is going to continue to protect those who cover themselves in prayer. He said, put blood on the doorpost. And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Man of God, can you pray for uh, our audience and those who are watching from everywhere uh, that God would give them a breakthrough in their families, a breakthrough in their finances, a breakthrough in their bodies, in their health. Wow. And then I'm going to come back and challenge you. Our God is a miracle working God and there's nothing he cannot do. Our God is a God that finds pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. I declare, blessed be the Lord God that giveth the power mm. to get wealth. Mm. I release wealth to you, watching me right now, uncommon prosperity. All doors are open for you. Listen to me. I know the enemy wants you to die prematurely. Mm. But long life is your portion. It is the will of God that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospered. You shall not die. None of your bones shall be broken. The organs in your body receive vitality and divine restoration. I command healing by his tribe. We already heal that wisdom to ride on on earth that keeps you far above principalities and powers. I release it to you today. No more powers of darkness holding you down. Today, victory is guarantee and miracle is sure in Jesus name. Receive the breakthrough and the deliverance of the word of God. On spiritual authority, you know you have two challenges. The first thing is to be a hearer of the word. And the second one is to be a doer of it. That you go ahead and begin to exercise the faith 
that you just heard. Faith without works is dead. So I want to challenge our partners and those of you that are watching today with the Psalms 91C. What does Psalms 91 says? Uh, he that he dwelleth in the secret place of, of the, the Most High. High. You messed me up on another program we did when you started talking about coming out of the dark. Oh. Uh, uh, Exodus, Exodus, Exodus uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. 3315. Can <laughs> you quote that for our audience? Of Exodus 20 and then 15. Uh -huh. And we're talking about um, God dwelling in the secret place, on the thick darkness. And I said sometimes, no matter how dark your situation is, it doesn't mean that God is not present there. He is always present. Some people think it's when they buy a house, when they have good things and good pleasure of life, that God is around them. And so when you go through storms, it means that God is not there. He called for light out of darkness. In the situation where you are, in the heat of life, and the pressure of life in your dark moment in life there is light and that light is god and no darkness cannot comprehend light listen to me whatever you are going through can't stop god from doing what he has destined for you you are not a biological accident mm. you are not a coincidence you're a prophetic bullet you are a child of destiny. You are not an accident. There is something God has written concerning you. And nobody can stop it. Your condition is not your conclusion. God has something for you that nobody else can take away. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Three areas I want you to sow a seed today. I want you to sow a seed of Psalms 91. With many of you, I want you to sow that seed three times. Three times. 91, three times. You know what that number is, right? 91, three times. What are we sowing for, Bishop? You're sowing for your house. And I mean the structure of the house. There's been hurricanes and floodings and fires and strange winds here in America that's tearing the structure of people's homes up. The second, you're gonna pray for your family. The third, you're going to pray for revenue coming in. And as you sow that Psalms 91 seed, it's going to cover you in those areas in the name of Jesus. You choose, you choose. But I promise you, every seed sown is a harvest announced a harvest that is manifested so will you do that today psalms 91 and then there's principles there a thousand shall fall at thy right hand and ten thousand at thy left and then god ends it by saying and surely you shall see the reward of the wicked of the wicked that demon that's been mm -hmm. trying to kill you mm -hmm. you're going to see it cast out mm. in jesus name Amen. let me pray for your finances right now Father, I set myself in agreement with the people of God that are watching Spiritual Authority today. Amen. All over the world, all around the globe. Amen. Whatever that dimension is of 91, sow that seed in the name of Jesus as God began to bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The announcer is going to come and tell you how you can sow your seed, and I'm going to come back and do our final prayer of closing. We really, really love you today. Amen. And remember what the man of God says. Your flesh, your body is your green card in the earth. Wow. Lose it and you'll <laughs> deport it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So let me pray for you now. I never like to leave a program without giving you an opportunity to come to Jesus. Mm. I, I come into Jesus... It's not so difficult. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, uh, if I would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Whichever door you come in is, 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 is not that important. What is important that you come in and that you get covered under the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of your saving grace. 
and I ask you to come into my life and forgive me of my sins and wash me in your blood. And give me to know that I have life eternal. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life and I'll serve you from this day forward in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, you just got born again. There's a number at the bottom of the screen. Call that number. They're going to help you. They're going to help you with joining the royal family, becoming a part of the body of Christ. And the spirit of baptism is going to overtake you. Three stages. The Holy Ghost baptizes us in Jesus. The preacher baptizes you in water. Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Ghost. Wow. Get ready for this move of God. Wow. The Holy Ghost baptizes you in Jesus. For by one spirit are we all baptized mm. into one body. Mm. The preacher baptizes you in water. Go ye therefore, teaching all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, Jesus baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. And one is coming greater than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to untie. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Receive the baptism of of the Holy Spirit in every area of your life now in Jesus' name Amen and Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you Bishop. Woo! This has been <laughs> lovely. Wow. And thank I got you. one question for you as we go up there. Okay. Who told you you couldn't preach? <laughs> <laughs> well, you you're got preaching name. You're preaching name. Thank you Bishop. See you next thank week on Spiritual Authority. Love you all. <laughs> Heh <laughs>